Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude and welcome to Animation Domination Reviews. So let's start it off with the Bob's Burgers episode, The Kids Run Away. So this episode is about when Louise has a cavity inside her gums. She needs a filling, but Louise hates the dentist. So Louise escapes from the dentist's office and runs away and she stays with her aunt. Gail. And so in order to get Louise back, Jean and Tina run away and stay with Louise and Aunt Gail. Bob and Linda, they're doing their little undercover work because it's all part of their plan for Louise to go back to the dentist and take care of the filling before the cavity hurts her even more. I gotta be honest, this was actually a very surprising episode. When I hear an episode that's focused on Louise, I'm just like, ugh, what do they have to offer? Because honestly, I don't like Louise. I don't care too much for the character. Sure, there are some times where I could find her funny and even likable, but for the most part, I just think she's annoying and she's frustrating. And yeah, Louise does get on my nerves just being so stubborn to go to the dentist, but... I actually had a really fun time with this episode. The storyline is a lot of fun. It was well written. There was actually some moments that made me laugh my ass off. I laughed hard at some moments of this episode. I found it to be overall clever. I just thought it was very creative. I'm not a huge fan of the Aunt Gail character, but for the most part, I actually did really like her here. It was really funny how their plan was for Aunt Gail to annoy Louise in order for her to come back home and to the dentist. So I, I really enjoyed that aspect. That was really funny too. Bob, Linda, and Teddy doing their un undercover work. Well, by that, actually watching from Aunt Gail's home from the car. That was really funny. And the finale. What the fuck? Like, I was laughing hard the finale and I gotta say, it was the funniest what the F moment I've seen in a while. But that finale, I did not expect it to get weird. It was really weird. And when Bob's Burgers gets really weird, I usually feel a little awkward or I just didn't really find it funny. But surprisingly, even though it was the biggest what the F moment I've seen in a while, I was actually really laughing hard at the finale when they're at the dentist. They're just going poom, poom, poom. It was just really weird. I was just laughing hard because of how stupid and how quite unexpectedly weird the finale was. So I, I actually had a lot of fun. I had a flaw with Louise being stubborn to go to the dentist. Gail was a little annoying, but overall, this was actually a really good Bob's Burgers episode with the biggest what the F moment I've seen in a very long time. But it was just very well done, so I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now I'm on to the American Dad episode, Rubber Neckers. So Rubber Neckers is about when Stan and friends scene, they go out to a restaurant and Stan is checking out, you know, hot women. Francine doesn't like that. So Stan makes some kind of promise to Francine to not check out other women. But while Stan is on his way to work, he happens to check out this very hot woman that was running. And it leads to an accident. There is actually this insurance agent voiced by Terry Crews. And he's trying to rat Stan out to Francine. Because Francine doesn't know that the only reason Stan was in an accident is because he was checking out a hot woman. Meanwhile, in the subplot, Roger and Klaus accidentally spill wine on the new couch. So they have to figure out some crazy plan to keep them from getting caught of spilling wine on that new couch. Rubber Neckers was a very unusual American Dad episode. But... I really enjoyed it. This is a very great episode. The writers definitely wanted to try something different, bring something new to the table, and I truly respect that. It's also a musical episode. The reason I say that is because this episode actually has a ton of singing. Usually Family Guy is known for having musical numbers. American Dad's not one to really do musical numbers, but this episode actually has a ton of musical numbers, and I really enjoy it because I love musicals, and I thought 
the musical numbers blended well with the episode. Sometimes, yeah, it could feel out of place, but with this episode, I never felt like the musical numbers were out of place. They actually came in at that very right moment. I loved all the musical numbers. They were catchy. They were funny as hell. My fair one would definitely have to be Steve with checking out women when he was visiting Stan in jail. I thought Steve's mu musical numbers was just priceless, very funny, and I just thought it was very... Well done. As for the subplot, it was really enjoyable, but you know, it was short and really the episode would be no different if it didn't have that subplot with Roger and Klaus trying to hide the, trying to figure out a plan to not be caught from spilling wine on that couch. So it was a really enjoyable plot, but of course I prefer the main plot a little more. I thought Terry Crews did a very great job guest starring in this episode. It was really enjoyable to hear his voice as this tough insurance agent. I really enjoyed how this tough insurance agent was suspicious of Stan the whole time, how he's not letting Stan fool him. Well, he was kind of fooled until one little thing just had to make Stan get caught. So I thought not only was it a funny episode, not only was it very clever with the musical numbers, but it was something different. It was very unusual. It gets really weird in the end, but it was still really funny. My only flaw with this episode really is just that there were a couple of really stupid moments, and I mean really stupid moments that did not have to be in this episode. But I still really enjoyed the episode overall, so I'm going to give it a very high 9 out of 10. Now I'm here to review the Simpsons episode, What to Expect When Bart's Expecting. So, this episode is about when Bart creates a voodoo doll of his hippie art teacher when he gets sick of art class and casts a spell and make her sick. But when he apparently makes her pregnant, he becomes the savior to Springfield couples. But then Bart and Homer they get captured to try to conceive this racehorse. So this Simpsons episode, it wasn't too great. Like, I'm gonna say this, this is an entertaining episode. I was definitely entertained watching it. It's a pretty enjoyable episode overall, but there are a lot of problems to this episode. Positives is that the episode was re was really funny in some moments. I personally think the episode got a little more enjoyable once Homer and Bart got captured. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Fat Tony returns. He is not dead. He was... He was supposedly dead last season. We saw him actually die last season. But now he suddenly comes back. And that's one of my flaws. You're going to kill off a character. Why do you suddenly bring that character back next season? I just didn't like that. Good to see Fat Tony again. That's good. I enjoyed his screen presence. But him returning just really felt flat for me. And it's just all like... What was the point of killing them off last season? Other positives is that I enjoyed how Bart and Homer tried to conceive the racehorse. That was really entertaining to see. I also thought how Bart was talking to all these couples into conceiving. That was really good to see right there. And some of the writing was actually really good. But the problems I had with this episode is, like I said, Fat Tony's unnecessary return. As enjoyable as it was to see Fat Tony, it was very unnecessary for him to be here. But then again, if he didn't return, I guess we wouldn't get that whole funny and entertaining conceiving racehorse part of the episode because I personally got more entertained by the episode when that happened. Otherwise, if it weren't for that, my rating for the episode would have been probably slightly lower. Other problem is that even though I did enjoy the whole Bart conceiving thing, the plot itself just didn't quite make that much sense to me. It was a little bit convoluted. It was as if the writers weren't quite sure what they were trying to do with this plot. It's just a little bit of a messy plot to me. And I also do think the ending of this episode was just really 
done. It did a reference to Modern Family, which I'm not surprised. Family Guy already did that, except I enjoyed how Family Guy did it. This one, I would have been fine if they did in the beginning, but as the ending, it's just so like, what the hell? It's just like, okay, we get to an uh, we get to an ending that ends all fine, and then all of a sudden it had to do that Modern Family reference, which just killed it for me. It just made me go, okay, wow, what the fuck? What was the point of that? That was just a pretty bad ending, in my opinion. But then, after commercial break, though, we do get one final scene before it cuts to the end credits. And that was the final scene with Duff 7-Pack. It was a little commercial. Uh, it was a very funny scene. I thought it was a very fun, a very funny way to conclude the episode before the credits started. It kind of made up for that unnecessary Modern Family ending, you know, before the commercial started. So, overall, hmm, I'll go a 6 out of 10 on this one. You know, it's not the best, it's not the worst, I was entertained, but, yeah, it could have been better. Now I'm here to review the Family Guy episode, Baby Got Black. I don't know why I just did that, but yeah, Baby Got Black. This episode is about when Chris dates Jerome's daughter, Pam. She is voiced by Kiki Palmer. Jerome, of course, it's the cliche. He disapproves of Chris dating his own daughter. Chris and Pam, they run away together, so it's up to Jerome and Peter to team up together to go find them. This Family Guy episode is okay. It was enjoyable, but it's definitely not the best episode I've seen this season. I thought Kiki Palmer did a really good job as Pam. Her voice definitely fit the character very well because I really like Kiki Palmer. She's a beautiful girl, and she just did a really good job voicing Pam. And I thought Chris and Pam, they had really good chemistry with each other. I bought into their chemistry. I bought the fact that they both liked each other and yeah I just really enjoyed their little chemistry. The storyline was decent you know it doesn't have the best writing or anything. My problems with Baby Got Black though is that Jerome was a huge jerk to Peter and I didn't appreciate that. Like yes I understand the fact that he wanted to protect his daughter. He's being that overprotective father and he didn't want Chris to date her. Okay but then he being a jerk because of the whole race thing and white people. That's where I really got bugged by Jerome. The fact that he's talking about white people and black people and he's just being all racist and just it's just all like Jerome when we saw him before he was just all nice and, and it's all like that whole thing is the reason why he doesn't want Chris to date Pam. I didn't really like that and I just didn't like how he treated Peter. It's just all like that that's no way to go Jerome. That is no way to go. Yes we understand your reasoning for feeling that way because it was explained later on. It's all like you don't have to treat Peter like that like sheesh. And most of the humor didn't work. In fact it's not really that funny of an episode. I think I only laughed maybe three times. I only laughed three times in this episode. I would say the funniest moment is definitely this Footloose cutaway. I thought the Footloose cutaway was just absolutely hilarious. Uh, it was unexpected and it was definitely the funniest part of the episode. In terms of humor, it really is not memorable. Only a few moments made me laugh and that's it. And I also thought there were a couple of parts that did feel a bit rushed. And of course, you know how the episode's gonna end. It's a little cliche, you know, the father doesn't like the daughter dating the son, but in the end, he approves. It's just all like, yeah, it has some of the generic formula we've seen thousands of times. But overall, Baby Got Black is not a terrible episode. I would definitely say it was entertaining throughout. It was just nothing too special. So I'm going to give the Family Guy episode, Baby Got Black, a 6.5 out of 10.